Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 1056 of the daily content grind. Uh, we're back on normal schedule, by the way. I'm back in town. Things are going well. Thank you for asking. I know you didn't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So, I thought we haven't done a tier list in a while, and I have a request for one that actually came in from two different patrons. So, uh, yeah, I think it's high time we got on to that. Both of them asked me to do a tier list for Transformers Medics, and I will admit, there's a lot. There are a lot of Medics out there. So, I... I kind of struggled with this one because originally I think I tried to do this list once and it was like 40 characters and the research to do all the ones I wasn't familiar with was daunting to say the least. And it wasn't even a complete list. So we've kind of kept it to like the most prominent ones that I could find. And we're going to stick it to like 20. All right. So 20 is going to be, you know, I, I think a decent enough list. And to be honest, there's some here that I'm not as familiar with as I should be. Uh, just mostly because it's been a long time since I read up on them. I've refreshed myself. We'll see how it goes, but for the most part, I think I should be good. And we're going to start with Ambula. And I will admit, uh, Ambulon is one where I might not remember all the nuance of the story. Because <laughs> Ambulon seemed to fit this weird thing in IDW where he's not Ratchet, he's not even First Aid, and it feels like his story is made to be pitied. Ambulon is given the worst alt mode, which is just a leg, because he's part of a failed combiner experiment from the Decepticons. So, a medic that switched to the Autobots, okay, that's a fair enough little twist. That's fine. But his whole thing of, like, his alt mode is terrible and he's ashamed of it. His name is terrible because all the good names are taken. And then he gets killed. And he gets killed to be kind of like the punchline or like, like the, the turning point or climactic event of, ironically enough, a feud between two other medics that are on this list later on. Ambulon just feels like he could have had more story to him. Like, I don't mind the idea of, like, a medic who is completely down on his luck. Uh, but it really feels like he really was just there to be the butt of a joke, ultimately. Um, he feels like he could have potential as just, like, a, a medic who's trying to let people be better than he turned out. But we never really got there. He got cut in half a little bit too, too early for that. A short-lived one, an interesting one, CAT scan. So this was a, I don't, not Bot I don't think this was BotCon. I think this was OTFCC era. Uh, regardless, it was a, uh, it was a Cheetor repaint, a Night Slash Cheetor repaint. Weirdly enough to do a medic character, which if you notice throughout Beast Wars and Beast Machines, we don't really have medics. There aren't really any medic characters. Beast Wars didn't need medics because of the CR chamber thing. And then, you know, Beast Machines kind of completely skipped over the whole thing because organic healing and all that. So, yeah, uh, it was an interesting thing. We hadn't had a medic in a long time, much less a brand new one. It's a more interesting idea of, like, a computer that was gifted a body and then now has to... Uh, adapt uh, themselves to living as an independent Cybertronian while still kind of being mechanical in mindset. I like Cat Scan just by design. I think it's an interesting repaint choice for Cheetor. And I like the overall idea of like trying to turn a medic out of a medical computer system. Uh, it leads to a little bit of interesting character uh, growth and development and possibility. Uh, I will admit very thin on the existing story, but I like what story there is, and I think it's a p character with more potential. So I'm going to bump him a little bit higher than I probably should. He'll probably end up on the low side of the premium by the time we are done. First aid is going to really depend on which fiction you are paying attention to. So in Generation 1, he really just, he did kind of fit in that, like, Ratchet is last year's toy, so we are pushing First Aid as the medic for the Autobots now. Um, but he does get his time to shine in G1. He's one of the very rare combiner characters. It seems like out of all the combiner teams, there is always one character 
you know, whether, you know, whether it's a slingshot or a swindle that does get to stand out from the rest of the team members as an independent character. And first aid kind of got to be that for the Protectobots. That said, first aid shines better in IDW where he is trying to basically live up to what Ratchet was once he is the last medic left on the Lost Light, at least the most experienced one left on the Lost Light, uh, which does lead to character growth development, uh, breaking out of like, G1 first aid's idea of like total pacifism to someone who can actually stand up for himself. You know, uh, he's, uh, he's the one who took Pharma's head off with a blaster, uh, because, you know, ultimately for a lot of reasons, but the, the, the straw that broke the doctor's back was the death of Ambulon. So yeah, depending on the fiction you're reading first aid could be in the low side or the high side of the premium i wouldn't put him holy grail i think they told a good story not in idw it's a great character growth story um but if you're looking at g1 he's a little thinner because it's g1 you know what can you expect uh speaking of this is fix it from the micromasters uh, this is another one where of course there's very little fiction to micromasters in general but there's just enough here that we can talk about fix it a little bit because he's part of his like rescue patrol team but because his leader gets hot-headed all the time he does find ways of like taking charge and actually you know kind of being responsible in amongst the team to the point where he actually is given the leadership of the team and that's kind of interesting because you don't ever see like medic characters in leadership roles that's another element of like, hmm, that could be interesting. Um, ultimately, like because MicroMasters don't really have that much uh, fiction to them, I can't really grade him terribly high. But just the idea of a medic kind of rising to leadership, even amongst a group of like rescue characters, is still decent. It's still a nice little story you could tell. You know, uh, and you know, it's a MicroMaster story, so uh, you desperately need more of them. Flatline is one that I kind of toiled with a little bit. He is one of those medic characters, and there's another one on the list. Actually, it's the one that's next on the list. Oh, that's fun how that works. The list is alphabetical, so this is incidental. Um, Flatline is one of those characters who is Decepticon affiliated, but he has an oath to save all Cybertronians, you know, villainous or heroic. So he does kind of get left in this weird middle ground. In IDW 1.0, he's, you know, basically like the medic Starscream goes to. Uh, but in 2.0, he does show a little bit more favoritism toward the Rise, or what would eventually become the Decepticons, the Ascenticons, whatever it was at the time. So he gets to be a gray area character, like, like morally questionable but like he he does value any kind of life which is not a bad call again he doesn't have a whole lot like i really feel like you could have done a little bit better with that fiction like i really feel like you could have been uh serving the character better especially in 2.0 where he just kind of becomes a part of the tri spark and just gets killed so that that ends him kind of unceremoniously before he got interesting I hate this part. I hate this part. We have to talk about a Kiss Player's character with Glit, but don't worry. It's after the creepy stuff went away and they just became like, like universe time traveling, like pop singers in that weird thing Kiss Players did back then. Glit is the same as, uh, the Glyph is the same as, uh, uh, flatline in that he doesn't care does not care what side of the field they're helping they're just going to save as many people as possible so uh to the point where like even in story megatron wanted his front you know wanted the the front legs of glit cut off and you'll you'll notice me i've forgotten glitz gen glyphs glitz gender hang on hang on hang on I just want to make I just want to make sure I'm not going. Yes, it is a he. Like I want to make sure because like something in my brain is like kiss players are mostly girls. Wait, hang on. Um 
At one point, Megatron higher, uh, orders his front legs cut off for healing an Autobot commander. Decepticons like Glit and his healing methods too much to let him to let that happen, which is hilarious. And again, like a good medic ends, ends up with the Autobots eventually, or at least gets depicted with the Autobots a lot. I think it's fascinating not only because like it's a weird one because it's a Ravage repaint, uh, but it again falls in that same level of flat line with the difference of Glit's got more story to him. Kiss players actually tried to tell story later on. So I got to put him above because there's more to work with and he's done more. And from what the legends say of Glit, far better medic. You know, I would love to know how Glit manages to do surgery and save lives like triage stuff with cat paws. Now, I don't really get that one explained. A very rare pure Decepticon medic. Well, end of end of prime notwithstanding. Uh knockout, yeah. Um there's no doubt. There's no doubt. <laughs> Aside from the fact that Decepticon medics are very rare, which makes them a lot more interesting. You know, you know, Decepticons who are good at saving lives, which is kind of counter to their usual MO. Uh, but you know, they get beaten up and shot a lot so you would expect them to have a lot of medics so here is one but the ego is great the swagger is great the voice is great the design is great knockout is just great like of everything that came out of transformers prime it really should be knockout that appears in more he gets comic book appearances on idw that's great i will accept that i will take that that said I need a new cartoon with him. I need him to be a foil against whatever Ratchet is going to be showing up in a, you know, a future Transformers uh, cartoon or movie or whatever. And I need to see, I need to see him again. And I even like, I would even go back to the Prime Universe and see how he got along with the Autobots after the fact, because they never really touched on that you know, particular thing either. He's just a great character. All around, just fantastic character. I, you know, everyone loves Knockout. Why wouldn't you? All right, medics down here with the Rescue Bots. Um, again, Rescue Bots not a cartoon I watch. You know, it's a little bit too kitty for me. Um, but I'll read up enough on the on the character to realize they do stand out. Medics does stand out because he falls under the logical character route, which. You would think more medical characters would, but not really. Surprisingly, not really. So he kind of he kind of fills that gap, and he does kind of like grow into his own as a character as the show goes on. Um, he's fine, but you know you're not gonna get super com you're not you're not gonna get, get like super complex or nuanced character out of Rescue Bots. So um, I'll put him like middle retail. I think medic-wise for kids, he's a fine character. I don't really see him as like huge or anything, right? All right, so who we got next? We got Minerva, and this is another one where you could split two different ways. There is the headmaster-controlled Minerva, you know, where you're basically on the human girl piloting, you know, the you know the actual transformer, or, or, there is the uh, cyber the Cybertron life form that uh, lived on past the original Minerva, um, and it was just like a full on Autobot. So looking at both of them, the second one is boring, uneventful. I would say um, she just kind of stood. She showed up as a medic uh, when uh, when basically uh, God Jinrai was dying, um, and that was basically her whole role. Uh, that, that was that was it. Uh, be one of the ones to help build him into uh, Victory Leo. That was the lot. That was all Minerva was there for. The original one told a better story where she's really excited to join the Autobots and be a good a do gooder. But learning what happens in war is really really hard on her. So she eventually fades into the background from the fights and eventually just ends up being kind of a field medic character. You know, and that does serve a more interesting personality again. You know, that do, that does show like another side of it where like someone's compassion and desire to be a hero would lead them down this road. But seeing the horrors that 
you know, they didn't expect are radically going to shift their ideals and their approach. So I'm going to give Minerva up to the premium. Aside from the fact, I do like the design a lot too. You know, especially, you know, being like the original toy, like one of the first female Transformer toys ever. And actually, uh, you know, uh, actually like uh, being, a, you know, being something of her own, you know, just doing something unique and just like having like, you know, a, a decent ap approach and design to her. Like I like Minerva again. One of those that uh, doesn't really get used nearly enough. All right, who we got next? We got, ah, oh. here we go. Here we go. There's another one that's a fan favorite. And I'm going to tell you, um, she'll go straight up to the top. I'll put her, I'll put her, I'll put her straight to the top. Nickel is fantastic. Nickel is fantastic. Um, my friend Mary, who I credit a lot to like getting like my confidence for this channel up where it needed to be, uh, thanks to like her being so in, in connected at Metrocon and getting me into the door and seeing something in me. She Nickel reminds me of her because she is very like she is very kind when you know her, but she is very blunt, she's to the point, she is very get the job done, no excuses. Take crap from absolutely nobody. And that's Nickel. Nickel is the medic of the DJD. The most intimidating and frightening of all Transformers in the IDW universe. And the IDW universe is a scary place. That says something. And she doesn't put up with anything from them. Even Tarn respects her, her skills, and her attitude. And will say nothing to her or against her. It's amazing. Like the some of the best scenes with the DJD are just watching Nickel reduce them down in just like like embarrassed patience because they have not taken care of themselves properly. Nickel's fantastic. Nickel's another one that like never really left IDW and re needs to. Oh, she's fun. All right, so whether this is the Paradron Medic. Or whether this is Lifeline, the last surviving Paradron medic who actually got a name. Either way, this really is just a green RC, isn't it? Um, Paradron medic in G1 literally has no fiction. They're on Paradron. Uh, some of them probably escaped the explosion of the planet. That's about it. They were just a reused model. They, you know, it was just incidental that the model they used was RC. Animation errors are fun, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah, Lifeline, at least, they give it a name. They give Lifeline a name so that they can actually put out new toys of her and repaint RCs into her for, from now until infinity. And they never really use her for anything. You know, she just kind of exists. Uh, I'm actually putting her flea market because she is low effort character in G1, just as, like, design-wise goes. And she's not really done anything. And like, what would you use her for that you wouldn't use one of the other medics or you wouldn't use an RC? I don't know. It's just disappointing. Pharma. Pharma is interesting in that like villainous doctors are always so freaking creepy. Like, I'm, like, really bad with body horror. It's one reason I don't like modern horror movies like Saw, because it's really just, like, gore for the sake of gore. You know, like, and it's, like, it, it's, it's, uh, like, it's disgusting to me. It's unsettling to me. I can't watch it. But that means I can't enjoy what's going on on the screen, no matter how much I know it's fake. It's just, like, ugh. And Pharma strikes that chord. Like, Pharma does horrifying things. You know, leaving Ratchet you know, as just... A head in a spark chamber, you know, nailed to his, you know, like nailed to his bed. It's freaky what Pharma is capable of. And just the associations and just like how like villainous that, you know, that whole side of IDW became. Like, there's a lot to unwrap. There's a lot to unwrap. It's weird in that he's one of those kind of like IDW style villains that views himself as an Autobot, but a different type of Autobot with a different goal and mindset that does come across extremely villainous. And there again, 
villainy that feels justified is always more is always interesting. And Pharma makes for a really, really good twisted villain. I'm putting up very, very high on that list. I like him a lot. Actually, you know what? No. You know what? I'm looking at some I'm, I'm looking at what's coming up. Premium. Top of premium. I'll give you that, Pharma. Cause uh We've entered the ratchet zone. And when you enter the ratchet zone, you have to acknowledge that there are a lot of different takes on the original uh, ratchet. Um, and really takes that I should have included. I just realized that the IDW ratchet is not in here. So you know what? Because it's based on a G1, I'm going to lump it in with a G1. Because uh, I did that with fur I did that with first aid. That's fair. But we're going to talk about animated ratchet right now and animated ratchet i'm telling it's like mm, animated ratchet is just peak crotchety seen it all and sick of it all type medic you know he, he you know, he's there because he still wants to do good but he is past his prime worn out and just like fed up with everybody he is just that right level of crotchety to just still be endearing enough to enjoy and still just be like, mm, just a just a fun character type, you know. And he makes for a really good foil for like all the young Autobots that he has to be surrounded by while he's on Earth. Great foil for them. Like that's really the the origin of like crotchety Ratchet, and it really is like something that needs to move forward more. Like we need more met we need more medics like animated ratchet. What about the G1? What about the G1? So if we're looking at the original G1 cartoon, he's not really crotchety. He has his like moments of gruffness, but overall, he seems like he's got some good bedside manner to him. Um, he's exceptionally efficient. Um, and yeah, like he j he seems like the kind of doctor you would want to be like the assistant for. If you were in the medical field, he's a great one to just be the the MA for. Uh, and if you're looking at IDW, oh my god, the stories they told. The stories they tell in IDW with Ratchet, you know? You know, you know, things like with Pharma and with Drift and like even like Ratchet's like the start of IDW's fiction. He's like, you know, the original the Autobot, the original Autobot to make contact. He's he's given a lot of credit in IDW. Um, for that, yeah, he's got to go up high. I think character personality wise, I still think animated Ratchet is more enjoyable to me. But I will, I I gotta give, I gotta give credit. Like later media has done great things for that Ratchet, and even in G one, like he's still a good character for a G one cartoon's uh, level of characterization. I do really like that take on Ratchet as well, so I think that's a deserved spot. Oh, the movie Ratchet. So, honestly, the only time we see Ratchet being any kind, like, we very rarely see movie Ratchet doing anything medical. You know, a brief attempt to fix Bumblebee's voice box. You know, being able to sniff the uh, the pheromones of Sam. Uh, that's really all he showed in the first movie. And then second movie, he's kind of there when, like, Optimus is there and Jetfire dies and Jolt does his thing. But more or less, he's just used as more of a combatant. And honestly, like, battle medics are cool and all, but he really just did feel like more Autobot cannon fodder than he did an actual medic. You know, it's down to, like, the Bayverse characterization of these characters. You know, sometimes there's just nothing there to work with, and that's kind of where he ended up. All right. One more Ratchet. One more Ratchet, and it's Prime Ratchet. Now, this one's tricky. I really like Prime Ratchet. Now, this one is not as old and crotchety as animated, but I think as a character, he's more endearing. He's the first Ratchet with a catchphrase. I needed that. He's willing to get along with humans uh, a lot more than some. He is, uh, you know, he is capable of going into battle. He prefers not to, but he he can throw down when needed. Um, yeah, he's a very solid take. 
he is a very, very solid take. Um, I'm going to I'm going to pair him. I'm, I'm going to pair him there with animated Ratchet. Um, and just to be fair here, yeah, I'm gonna move Nickel down. I'm gonna move Nickel down because while I love her characterization, I really do think like the the medic archetype that animated Ratchet started, and that the Prime One, you know, honed into you know into this new being. I think that balances itself out. I think they need to stay together, and I think it's an incredibly good take on the traditional Autobot medic. So I, I think we're leaving we're leaving her in the Holy Grail. Don't get me wrong. Red alerts, uh, a, a weird one here. Um, so in Armada, he's one of the first Autobots, and again, he is used very strong as a combatant, which I think comes from the fact that his toy is very gimmick loaded with weaponry. Uh, so again, his medical skills are not as shown off as you know as we get in as we see later, and eventually the medical skills go away completely because he does return in Cybertron and then. Basically gives up, you know, has to give up being the ambulance to become like the Cybertron, you know, you know, like, you know, the Cybertron defense version of his, of himself. Hard to be, uh, hard to be an, a medic when you've got a gigantic like Metal Gear esque nuclear missile on your shoulder. Um, I'm going to put him kind of low mid retail. I don't mind the character. I don't mind the character, but it really doesn't feel like he got his chance to shine on the medic side of things as much. Um, you know, Armada characters kind of fall into that, like, it's for kids, the characterization's not going to be that strong kind of vibe. But uh, but unlike some of the other ones in this list, I'm not seeing as much potential for him because I didn't, I don't, he didn't stick with me enough to really feel like, I want to see this character more, I want to see this character develop. Speaking of not sticking around very long... Uh, we're throwing in Scalpel because he's got one good line, which is to tell the Decepticons in Revenge of the Fallen to uh, slaughter the little one so that we can use him to rebuild Megatron. Uh, beyond that, he shows up. He acts super creepy. Um, he's like a little like repair ant thing in the next movie. But beyond that, yeah, I think the idea of like a micro surgeon type robot makes him a little bit interesting but yeah like it's it's again in that movie verse element of like kind of a non-character kind of a nothing of a, of a character i can't put him very high i just can't also the microscope mode kind of sucks just saying all right I put Scar on here because he's one of the most recent medics in Transformers, admittedly with the, one of the smallest elements of story. But I'm putting him in here, and I'm justifying this. It's not just because he's the Ankylosaurus uh, Dinobot that I always wanted. It's not just that. It's the fact that he is the medic for the Dinobots, and that's an interesting concept in and of itself. Because... Dinobots take a heavy amount of damage. How good of a medic do you have to be to respond to a Dinobot who needs to be repaired? You know, how tough of a medic are you when you can go out on the battlefield and retrieve a Dinobot that, you know, that was fighting something capable of hurting it that badly? That's got to be a tough medic. You know, and I think that's where the plated Ankylosaurus with a t with a club tail on the back, you know, you know, given like him a chance, you know, something to attack with while retreating and taking someone off the field, that makes sense for the beast mode. I think that actually plays in quite nicely. Admittedly, fictionally, he doesn't have a whole lot. I will put him at the bottom of retail release because I think concept-wise, he is great. I think the concept is great. And I do think his design sets him apart enough from the other Dinobots for me to be happy with him. But I will admit, I will admit, yeah, uh, there's nothing really to go on. He's a nothing character. I will admit this. And we're going to finish it off with Velocity, potentially the youngest of the medics on this list. Uh, she's a Kamian who came to Cybertron to become a medic. She's fresh out of the Academy, learning a lot of this on the field for the very first time. So that gives her a much more upbeat personality than these medics usually have. It gives her more of a uh, 
a, you know, more wander to the world that she is in, especially because she's discovering Cybertron. She hasn't been hurt by the war. That's a huge, huge thing. She's one of the few medics in this list that has not had to suffer and look at millions of years of Cybertronian war to harden them or make them cold or crotchety. She is bright, upbeat, eager to adventure. And even with the adversity thrown at her, because living on the lost light ain't easy, she is. She takes it as a growth experience. She's down for more. Velocity is a very fresh character in both concept and her own view so i like the diversity she adds to this I, you know what i'll leave that i'll leave it i'll leave it there i like the diversity she adds to it and i like what she brings to the table is just this is a fun character this this does this does a lot for me so that's where i'm gonna leave it um 20 transformer medics ranked as i feel is appropriate of course these are very subjective. You are free to disagree with me in the comments below. I might be forgetting some big story arc some of these had that may, may make them higher or lower. I will admit I'm a little out of my element, but did my best because that's what I was asked to do. So, as always, thank you everyone for watching. I will see you next time.